some people have told me, this is more than one, but they said, the first time I came to Helvetia, I felt like I was coming home. That they had never been here before, but it just felt like some place they were called to. I just think that, uh, you know, people find a calmness here they don't find somewhere else, a quietness. There was a guy who came up here a lot, was a forester or something, and he worked up and down this county road that's up the hill from us here. And when he died, he asked that his ashes be spread along the road here. Yeah, there is something. And I, I don't really know what that is. I don't know unless it's just the, the close knitness of us. I, you know, I, I just think how special that is, and, and I'm glad. But why are we more special than another little community in West Virginia? You talk about heaven, you're almost in it when you come outside. And I love it here, and it's, it's gorgeous. My name is Dave Whip, and I just love being able to walk out my door and be in the woods. I thought that I would like to travel when I retired, but uh, the uh, interest isn't there. So. Yeah, I don't feel like I'll be any happier anywhere else than I am here, so it's, that's a nice feeling. My real name is Linda Smith, but my dad, when I was little, he called me Honey Bunch. And over time, the honey was dropped and it just was bunch. There's several people that don't even know I have another name. And my son was one of them. He was, oh, 12, 13 years old, and he answered the phone. They wanted to talk to Linda Smith, and he said, there's no one here by the name of Linda Smith. My name is Nancy Detweiler Gain, and we're um, on Hilltop. It's just a group of farms that are on the hill outside of Helvetia. Helvetia is located in the center of West Virginia. It's really not close to anything, about an hour from Buchanan or Elkins. It was settled by the Swiss in, I think, 1869. And because of the isolation, it has stayed pretty much that way. I've lived here all my life. Dad had sheep and cattle and pigs, and Mom had a garden, and it was fun. We all worked together, all the neighbors worked together, so it was great. I love the views, I love the light. I just, I just love it. Well, I started coming up here in the 80s. Uh, some mutual friends who were in Morgantown were, had a band called the Helvetia Blues Band. So when they were gonna play in Helvetia, they would call me and say, hey, come up to Helvetia for the weekend. And after a couple trips here, I got to know some of the locals, of course, they're very friendly, and, and got to the point of thinking about retirement and decided this is where I wanted to be. So I bought my place here and just retired. 
Elvisha wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this unique piece of land. Yeah, it wouldn't be the same. And yeah, the isolation has certainly shaped the character. Yeah, these are the two bee houses on the property. And for some reason, Bill just came home one day and said, we're going to do honeybees. And then we've been at it ever since. When you're in a beehive, you are concentrating just only on the bees. The smoke is calming to the bees, the bees are calming to me. We're going to pull a few frames up to see if there's honey, and if there is, then we'll rob the bees to extract. But this is a beautiful fall crop. That's tremendous with the, all the, all the capped honey that they have. It's, That's what we're looking for, isn't it? It is. Beautiful. And what we're doing now is we're going to take all the supers off and we're setting them here on this front bench and then after we get all the supers off we will blow the bees out and the old people didn't do it this way they brushed the frames off. And I get the easy job here <laughs> because they're heavy to carry from there to here, so. Bees are, are fascinating creatures. One thing I've found is you cannot get ahead of them, can you, Bill? <laughs> They're not doing what you want them to do. You're going to talk to them. But it's not like a, I'm a cattle whisperer either. <laughs> I mean, uh. Come on. Shibi, shibi, shibi. Shibi, shibi. Come here. Come on. I give you something to eat. Ooh, something good. Yeah, look. <laughs> Here you go, here you go. Come on. Oh, you spooky things. Come here. Sheep, 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 sheep. Sheep, 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 sheep. Come on. Sheepy, sheepy. You're camera shy, like me. I have had this garden about seven years, probably. The garden's actually on my neighbor's property, but as you can see, things really went wild here at the end. Last year I didn't get a single cucumber, this year the vines just went crazy. But yeah, I like to come down and pick things right, just in time to fix them for dinner. I've read that the um, Sugar and corn starts turning to starch 20 minutes after it's taken off the plant. So I will come down and pick it right when I'm getting ready, getting ready to fix dinner. Uh, years ago, I had people accuse me of, of adding sugar to my corn when I'd serve it to them. But it's just so much sweeter than anything you're ever going to experience in a store. the garden, you know, putting your hands in the dirt, that kind of thing, and, and particularly the harvesting, I think, 
gives you a different feel. It certainly gives you a different feeling about your food, but uh, uh, it makes me feel more connected. Is it's funny because when the when they plow, I was like, oh, and, and the Sue that I work with, and I was like, oh, I love to smell that. She just like rolls her eyes, like, yeah. it's the springtime smell. I don't know. Now I'm getting too weird. <laughs> Well, we're here in my greenhouse and uh, it's October, so this is all done and dried up from the summer and I won't think about this again until February. <laughs> you know, you come here in, in February and March when it's cold and snow and you're sick of winter and it's, it's springtime in here. I just love it. I love to grow things and I think I, I guess it's the farmer in me, you know. I like to smell the dirt and I just like it. So I do it. You have to have it in your heart to be a farmer. It's not like, I don't, I don't know. It's not easy. You either like to do it or, or not and some people don't. I don't think you can farm and survive. You know you have to have another job and that's the problem here is there's not a lot of jobs. We are in the extracting room and we're starting to extract the honey and Martin here is uncapping the frames so that we can put it in the extractor to the centrifugal force forces out the honey. Okay, these wines I make from California juices. They get shipped into Pittsburgh, and um, I pick them up there. Uh, I made some last spring from South American juice. My process is my own. I've kind of worked it out, but I do um, put a good bit of effort into temperature control, as you see. They have the um, heating pads and thermostats and thermometers on them. And what I have here is Chardonnay, Barbera, and Cabernet. I, mean, I like my wine, and, but I've always wanted to make a good wine. And I uh, found out I do enjoy it quite a bit. Well, I'm looking forward to, to snow and I can stay in the house and put a puzzle together. <laughs> and I can rest a little bit. But, <laughs> but this time of the year, you're wrapping up the uh, a garden and this past week I did that. I cut down all the sweet corn stalks and I leave them lay in the garden because that puts nutrients back in the soil. And usually we're inside making honey soap or making jellies or filling honey jars. These are the jellies and jams that we sell. All the berries are from the farm here, or a local farm. In this area, we want to leave about 80 to 90 pounds of honey on that house. What they've got stored up now lasts them all winter. I love winter. I think it's just kind of restful, peaceful. Uh, usually up here on the hill in the wintertime, there's always a breeze and, and a lot of people say, well, I'm not going to live up there. You know, you get too much drifting of snow and blowing and everything, but 
That's just part of where you live. I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world.